Thatcher privatized the electricity system in the UK and introduced the idea that privatization is a good thing for the people. The idea being that the market knows better how to reduce costs than the state. The first step was to say, how much are you paying for your electricity? You pay 50 quid per, I don't know how many kilowatt hours. We're going to cap it. We're not going to allow the price to go beyond what you're paying. And then we're going to privatize and we will allow competition to bring it down. If it brings it down, you gain consumer. If they don't succeed, they are still capped at 50. So you've got nothing to lose. You only have things to gain. That was a very powerful argument. If you add to that the fact that they were giving away shares to the people, who then, of course, sold them to the oligarchs, it was impossible to stop privatization. Second phase was to say, but who am I as a politician to be deciding the cap of the maximum price? Why should politicians decide that? Let the market do it. Instead of having ministers deciding the maximum price, we're going to simulate a market. We can't have a market when it comes to electricity. Why can't we have a market when it comes to electricity? If they were, you know, 30, 50 different cables, electrical cables coming into your home, and you could choose which one you're going to take your electricity from. Then there would be a market, then there would be some kind of competition between different providers. But of course, it would be stupid to have 50 grids going through every house and every street in every country. So this one, they simulate the, the market. And how do they do that? They say, okay, we're going to split the electricity company in at least three parts. First will be power generation. So each power plant becomes a company or is owned by some company that may own more than one. And these companies compete with one another in the wholesale market to provide the system with a wholesale price. The second part is the network, the grid. That belongs to another company. And then there is the part where electricity leaves the grid to go into your home. And that's where you create electricity providers who compete with one another in the market of buying the electricity from the grid, which has bought it from the producers, and then selling it to consumers. You simulate competition between the producers. They produce the wholesale price. And then you have providers who are competing with one another to allow competition to shrink the distance between the wholesale price and the retail price. That was phase two of privatization. And this is what is now prevailing in the European Union. They copied the Thatcherite phase two model. When you simulate a market, you need to have government-imposed rules, simply because you don't have a real market. You have a government pretending simulate a market. When it comes to a proper auction and you've got people selling stuff, you would expect that the company or the person offering the lowest price wins, right? No! In this market, the company offering the highest price wins. And then the price is the same for everybody, as long as the sum of the electricity that they have provided is no more than a certain amount, which is what the market demands. It's madness. And then, supposedly, the providers compete with one another to reduce the retail price to that maximum wholesale price. Now, if this sounds complicated. It is because it was intended to be complicated, so the citizens of Europe do not understand that this is a scam against them, even during the good times. Proof of that is that since privatization, the difference between the cost of producing an average kilowatt hour and the retail price has trebled. So don't believe anyone who tells you that the problem has nothing to do with the system. The problem is that the cost of production is going up. Yes, the cost of production is going up because the price of natural gas is going up. But that does not explain why the profit margins of the firms is getting larger. Are we clear on this? I spoke in the Greek parliament and I exposed a scam of the Greek government. We presented in parliament a proposal on how to shield consumers from skyrocketing prices. What we said was this. It is crazy that because the price of electricity produced from natural gas is skyrocketing because the price of natural gas is skyrocketing. It's crazy, crazy mad that electricity coming out of solar panels, which costs nothing to produce once you have a solar panel, it is free. That the private company that is selling solar produced kilowatt hours should get for that kilowatt hour the same price that it would get had it produced it from the most expensive natural gas. It is mad, right? All you need to do is to eliminate these super profits. I mean, how did I understand that is a scam? Because they don't tell you, footnote 3.8, this is where the scam is. You've got to do some detective work, decipher it yourself. The first inkling we had that this is a scam is when it mentioned that the daily auction for the wholesale price continues. This stock exchange in which wholesale producers are competing with one another in an auction continues. Now, the human mind cannot wrap itself around that. If you have a maximum price that is imposed by government on every different power station, why do you need the auction? Isn't that the obvious question to ask? Now, here it is. This is what they do. Remember, the price for every megawatt hour that the government imposed from hydro 
works was 85 euros. I looked at what the auction yielded, the price. It was 700 during this period, 700. The price cap was meant to be, for those kilowatt hours produced by HydroWorks, it was meant to be 85. So this is how it works. The producer of that kilowatt hour or megawatt hour receives the 700 euros that has been determined by the auction in the Netherlands. But then they have to give back to the Greek state the difference between the 700 and the price cap of 112, which is 588. So they give it back to the government. Okay, so far you think it's stupid. I mean, why do this? Why don't you just ask them to receive 112 instead of receiving 700 and then have to return the 558? So far, no scam, just stupidity, just bureaucracy. Here's where the scam comes. The government does not take this money in order to give it to consumers. No. The government takes this money to give it to the retail companies. Now, if you look at every market almost in Europe, the same shareholder that owns the producer owns the retail company. Ah, got you. So it is as if I have a company that is producing electricity and I have a company that is a retail company. They let the pseudo auction determine the price at 700. They force me to return to the state from my left pocket, which is my pocket as a producer, 588 euros to the government. And the government puts it in my right pocket. Now, is it any wonder that the consumer feels no relief? No, none, zero, zilch. Then what the government does is, okay, to help you, dear consumer, I'm going to borrow money, the government will borrow money, add it to the government budget to subsidize your electricity bill. In other words, to allow you to give the oligarch the money in my pocket that the government has taken from one pocket and put it in another pocket. Now, if this is not a scam, I do not know what the word scam means. This is the definition of a scam. Why are they doing this? Because complexity is in the interest of the oligarch. They are imposing a price cap, they are subsidizing the public, so the government is doing something. No, the, the government is doing nothing. The government are agents of the oligarchy, they are crooks and they are thieves. This is a clear-cut case of destroying the capacity of the majority of Europeans to make ends meet in the interest of an oligarchy, combining two things. On the one hand, the market fundamentalism of Thatcher that creates the simulated market, which has failed us, with statism. The state borrowing, increasing public debt, so that the state can subsidize the oligarchs, but not the consumers. The only solution to this is the immediate abandonment of the market model, the closure of the auction house in the Netherlands. The first step before you do anything else, we need to have a proper price cap, both at the wholesale level and at the retail level, so that the price that people pay reflects average cost plus a small percentage, a little bit of profit for whoever is running the show. That's number one. That should be DiEM25 policy across Europe. And market fundamentalism. And the delusion of markets. Blow up markets. There can be no market when it comes to electricity because there's only one electricity cable coming out of your wall. And there can be no market. When they try to create, simulate a market with one cable coming out of the wall, they are scamming society. Point number two, we need an energy union, a green energy union. We can no longer sustain this fallacy of the market, which allows the German government to have its own plans about the green transition, the Greek government its own plans. Nobody's investing in green hydrogen properly. Nobody's investing in solar panels and windmills that are actually owned by communities. They are doing everything for the oligarchs. The second plank of the DiEM25 policy, I think, should be a socialized green energy union incorporating within the system this network of green energy production and distribution with ownership rights at the municipal level, the regional level, overseen by citizens' assemblies, by juries, randomly selected citizens, and so on and so forth. And the third thing that we must do, and I know that that sounds controversial, and sanctions on Russian energy. The only people who benefit from the sanctions on Russian gas and oil are the Russian oligarchs and the European oligarchs. It is not helping Ukraine. It is not undermining Putin. It is enriching Putin and his oligarchs and the sanctions that are only in the interest of the united oligarchies of Russia, of Ukraine, of Germany, of Italy and of Greece.